Well, Kansas State University researchers have developed three new wheat varieties best suited for different growing conditions, and they're available for the first time this year. Joining us now by phone for a further look is Kansas Wheat Alliance CEO and President Daryl Strauss. Daryl, thank you for taking the time to chat with us this morning. Uh, why don't you tell us about these new varieties? Well, good morning, Jen. I'm glad to be here. Um, we're really excited about these three new varieties that we have coming out of K-State. It's pretty unique to have this many varieties uh, coming out from the universities, and, and they just happen to cover the whole you know, part of the state this, this time around. So uh, the three new ones that we've got uh, starting in the west is one called Tatanka. Um, it's a you know, really good choice for dry land uh, wheat production out there. It's going to have the straw that those producers want. It's got good drought tolerance good uh, leaf and stripe rust resistance and has really good uh, yield potential and good quality. Um, we've got one for the uh, south central part of the state and going out west too called Larry. Uh, it's named after uh, Larry Patton who was a longtime uh, technician for the wheat breeding program here at K-State Manhattan. And it's a really a kind of a high performing variety for guys that really like intensive management uh, and they really want to push a variety. It's one that will you know, really, really respond well. And then the one that seems to be getting a lot of attention right now is Zenda. Uh, Zenda is a replacement for uh, Everest. Everest has been the number one variety in the state for the last uh, five years now. And, and Zenda kind of brings in a lot of those things that Everest has. Everest is one of its parents, and so it's, it's got good uh, stripe rust resistance and leaf rust resistance and also resistance to fusarium head blight or scab, as we call it, and, and some for Bali yellow dwarf as well. Now, where are these varieties uh, best adapted for growth? So, uh, Tatanka, like I said, is, is really set up well for western Kansas, dry land kind of conditions. It'll go up into Nebraska, eastern Colorado, down into Oklahoma Panhandle and Texas Panhandle really well. Um, Larry is going to be across the southern part of the state, um, Kansas, down into Oklahoma, and, and maybe even reaching into the Texas Panhandle. And, and Zenda would be kind of the central corridor of Kansas, north to south, up into Nebraska, where we even get some, some corn up in that area and over into Missouri. So, um, like I said, we've really covered the whole state of Kansas, but a really big chunk of the, of the Great Plains with these three new varieties. Now, are these varieties available and ready to go on the market right now, or is it something we're planning for the next growing season? Uh, yeah, so they're they're ready to go. Uh, the farmers uh, will have their first chance at them this fall. Seed producers got seed of these last fall. Um, we had uh, a good number of acres out there uh, for the most part, and with the exception of some of the problems we ran into in western Kansas with some uh, production from either wheat streak mosaic or some hail, which is kind of hard to predict, uh, we should have a, a good amount of seed. Uh, but these are going to be popular varieties, and I always tell farmers, you know, popular ones are the ones that sell out soon, so they should be sure and get those reserved from their local seed producer. All right. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us. We appreciate your time. Kansas Wheat Alliance CEO and President Daryl Strouts on the phone with us from Manhattan, Kansas. Well, in the studio with us, meteorologist Tim Ross, he's standing by and has the latest update to your weather forecast.